The point of DIY nature travel is finding exotic places where adventurous souls can safely find scenic wonders and nature at its best without going on expensive tours. We chose Thailand because it's been open to tourism far longer than its neighbors on the peninsula. We felt confident we could muddle about safely without speaking the language. The lovely Thai people proved us right. Leaving the U.S. from Chicago, we flew nearly over the North Pole. The vastness of the northern tundra is spectacular. Time zones tick off rapidly at the top of the globe where longitudinal lines converge. Spend a few days in Bangkok recovering from jet lag. The city is bustling, colorful, entertaining, polluted, and huge, with a population nearing 7 million. Natives have invented ingenious methods of survival. Most seem healthy and well-fed. Food is abundant and reasonably priced. Nearly every square foot of sidewalk is used to sell something. Thailand's history is long and varied. The old rub shoulders with the modern. Living in a country as young as the United States, it's hard to comprehend just how much ancient history impinges on current affairs elsewhere. On gallery walls of Watts, religious buildings, history lessons are drawn in graphic detail. Power shifted west to Siam, the name of present-day Thailand, as the influence of Angkor Wat in present-day Cambodia waned. In mid-1700s, the Burmese destroyed the northern capital. After the Siamese regained power, they built their capital where Bangkok is now. Previous kings avoided colonial rule by ceding land to Laos and Cambodia, which were then part of French Indochina. A peaceful coup in 1932 converted Siam from an absolute to a constitutional monarchy based on the British model. In 37, the name was changed to Thailand. Sadly, rival military rulers caused chaos. Finally, in the 1980s, a return to a civilian government and democracy calmed things down. The present king, now quite elderly, stepped back from governing and used his power and popularity to restrain excesses of the other powers. In Thailand, power is shared by elected officials and the three M's, monarchy, monks, and military. Sadly, the military is ascendant now, after the summer of 2014. Canal tours by the long-tailed boats, named for the very long propeller shafts, are a good way to see some neighborhoods. Don't leave Bangkok without a visit to the Grand Palace. To get past the guards and not offend Buddha, one must have appropriate attire. Long pants for men, skirts below the knee for women, and covered upper arms. Rental pants cover tourists who show up in shorts. Shoes and hats are removed in the temples. The Royal Palace Complex was started in 1782. The impression upon entering is overwhelming glitz. A spectacular temple houses the sacred Emerald Buddha we'll hear more about later. Chanting can be heard from the Buddhist services in progress. Religious influences from China and India are obvious. Next to the Dusit Zoo, Inside the cages are the usual suspects, some in comfortable situations, others in piteous ones. However, outside the cages on the park grounds we found a stork rookery and a lake full of water monitor lizards and turtles some luckier than others.
Most yards in the Buddhist portions of Southeast Asia have a shrine. Daily offerings are placed on them. Before leaving Bangkok, join the throngs getting inexpensive street-side massages. Then, brave an overnight bus to Chiang Mai, the hub of northern Thailand.